Hey guys, so our next tab is the external editing tab, and this is one that you guys want to be pretty familiar with. Um, it's pretty important. But basically what you're telling Lightroom here is how to deal with files when you're editing them externally. And uh, so an, an external editor would be something like Adobe Photoshop. Uh, now that's also made by Adobe, but there's also third-party editors. Um, we don't actually use any third-party editors, so in this tutorial we're going to be dealing with basically Photoshop. Um, but you can set that up here so that Lightroom can basically import your files directly from Lightroom into those editors as well. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. When we edit in Adobe Photoshop CS5, and just as a quick note, Lightroom will actually detect which version of Photoshop is installed when you install Lightroom. So if you are running a different version of Photoshop, it's actually going to show that version here. So yours might not be CS5, it could be CS4 or 3. There's nothing wrong with Lightroom, it's just showing you what you have installed. Um, okay, so what you're going to see is if I take an image into Photoshop CS5, it's going to use the TIFF file format with the Profoto RGB working uh, color space with a 16-bit depth and with a resolution of 240 dots per inch. That is the default settings um, and no compression. So how would I do that? Well, we're going to learn that more in depth later, but just in case you're curious, I'm going to close this, right click on my image, edit in Adobe Photoshop CS5 is that first default setting. Um, so as soon as I click that, it's going to create the file with those settings that we just went over right here. Now, I actually don't like these settings for my default settings, and here's the reason why. The TIFF file format is pretty cumbersome. It's a lot larger uh, and, and less efficient to work with than Photoshop files. So while you are keeping more color detail from Lightroom, it's not necessarily noticeable or necessary uh, for most purposes. And keep in mind that we run a full professional studio and we don't use TIFFs in our studio. So if, if you really need the extra color depth and everything like that, then, then you probably know what file format you need to be using. For the rest of you, default to PSD and you'll be set. Uh, now the color space, we actually use sRGB and the reason is most of your labs that you deal with, especially um, like if you're doing portrait stuff or if you're doing just kind of standard prints, most of your labs are going to be printing in the sRGB color space. So I want to see that same color space in Photoshop uh, versus, be, versus editing in another color space and then having to export to that when it goes to the lab or versus having the lab have to convert it because you never know what it's going to come out as. Um, so we like to keep the same color space as the lab right there. Um, the next thing is our bit depth. Now, bit depth is basically, again, dealing with the color space, the amount of detail that's stored within the file. The issue is a 16-bit file is going to obviously be a lot larger, and also there are a lot of plugins um, and presets and, and actions that you're using in Photoshop that may not work with 16-bit files. Uh, they may only work with 8-bit files. So to make sure everything stays uh, basically compatible with all of our plugins and everything, we keep it as 8-bit. Uh, again, there's not much difference, at least to the naked eye. If you need the extra color gamut, this is probably something that you already know anyway, so you'll, you'll know your own settings. But for the rest of you, 8 bits is sufficient. It'll make sure that um, you have, you'll, you'll have enough color detail and it'll also be compatible and it'll keep the file sizes kind of small and easy to work with. Well, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to increase our resolution to 300 dpi. And the reason why is that most printers actually print at 300 dpi. And some, like say album printers, actually print at 350. Now, for the occasions that we're going to use those album printers, then I'll just basically manually upsize those images and, and increase the resolution in Photoshop. Uh, otherwise, 300 dpi is, is sufficient. So these are the default settings we use in the studio when we're editing in Photoshop. Okay. Now, the next section right here is the additional external editor. Uh, you can set up third-party software here, or you can use different versions of Photoshop or, or whatever. Now, and, and you might be asking, well, Pi, why would I use different versions of Photoshop? Well, for example, we have plugins and actions that we purchased way back with CS3 and CS4 that aren't necessarily compatible with CS5. They don't quite run how they should. And so I might want to set up an external editor to be able to open up a previous installation. Maybe CS, I have CS3 still on my computer, and I want to open up CS3 so that I can use those plugins on whatever specific images I want. Um, one other specific thing I like is what I'm going to show you guys how to set up is setting up the 32-bit version of Photoshop. Maybe you have something that's not compatible with the 64-bit version and you need to run the 32-bit version for editing.
Well, you can set that up here, and I'm going to show you how real fast. So what I would do is I'd go to the application. I'm going to hit choose, and and this is how it's going to work if you're selecting a third-party external editor or a different version of Photoshop. All you're going to do here is you're going to locate where the the file is for where the application is. So I'm going to go my C drive. I'm going to go to the x86 folder. That's my 32-bit stuff. Adobe. I'm going to go to Photoshop. CS5. This is 32-bit Photoshop. And here is the application right there. So I'm going to select the application file. Now I'm going to set up my defaults again however I like. I want the same defaults as I had up here. So PSD, sRGB, 8 bits, 300 resolution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a preset. So just click here, hit save current setting as new preset. So it's going to save all the settings we just decided here, including the application. And I can choose whatever I want. So I'm going to call this Photoshop CS5 32-bit. Okay, and hit create. Now, if I hit OK and right-click back on my image, I'll get my default edit in Photoshop CS5, and I'll get Photoshop CS5 32-bit. This right here is actually the same thing. This is it, it's basically saying edit in the external editing application. This right here is the preset that I set. So if I set multiple presets, they'll all show up here. So maybe I have three or four different pieces of software that I want to edit in. Well, I can open that so, uh, open that image in those different pieces of software directly from Lightroom, and it's going to store. Lightroom is going to create the the copy of the file, and it's going to store it right next to the original. So it's super convenient and organized. Okay, so you can set up as many of those presets as you want. Let's jump back into our preferences, external editing tab, and I'm going to go to this last option right here. This is the file naming for how it's going to treat basically these externally edited names. Um, now we can use one of these templates. Basically, here are the different templates where it says custom name. I can do a custom name with a a file number. So the custom name would be like say Lin and Jirsa, and then the file number is going to be 002, whatever I want. Um, or I can use you know any of the other presets, or I can specify my own. And you can get as crazy as you want with these. Now. When you're editing, th keep in mind that this is only for the name of the file when you're taking it into an external editing program. So you probably don't want to be too crazy because we're going to set other types of defaults for like standard file naming later. Um, but yeah, you can kind of add whatever you want. If I click, let's see, so right now I'm editing the custom name original file number. Maybe I'll do custom name and sequence. And I can click here, I can have different options for my sequence basically. So if I want my sequence to be four digits long or five digits long or however many digits I want, I can select that here. It'll add that sequence setting. Now you'll notice that it also kept my first one because it just added it on. Well, if I want to delete any of these kind of settings here, I'm just going to click one and then hit delete and it'll remove it from the file name. Um, and it's, it's just basically what it's showing you up here is the example of what it's going to look like after you set up your settings. So you can get as crazy as you want going from the image name to the sequence and data. You can even select metadata to include in the uh, in your file name. Okay, and I'll let you guys mess around with that. It's pretty self-explanatory. So, and that's it for the external editing tab. We're going to move on to file handling next.